55 in the Word of God. And if you find your place there, if you'll please stand. Uh, Psalm 55. Chapter number fifty-five, and we're going to read. We're going to read the whole psalm. Um, I feel like the Lord's giving me a message here for just for this uh, for tonight. And I think it's a good one. I think it will help each one of us because we are either there, been there, or heading there. Amen. And uh, and really, all of us probably are experiencing. Uh, some of this right now in a little, a little bigger. Some of us are, are, are going through a real trial in our life. And some of us are going through the trials of life. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and so it, it, the Word of God is so clear and so wonderful in how it can really just kind of minister and help. And uh, uh, God gave this to me this week and it really helped me. And so I want to kind of attempt to, to, to help you with it tonight. So uh, please pray for me because I. I you know, it's what the Lord uses. So, Psalm 55, Bible says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they cast iniquity upon me in, the, in wrath, they hate me. My heart is sore pained within me. And the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. Lo, then I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about, go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from their streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that, I, that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou a man mine equal, my God and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. Let, de let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear. Look at verse number 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. Let's go ahead and pray, and then I, and this is all going to make sense. I'm going to tell you exactly what was going on with David here. Uh, but I, I want to preach on this. Uh, go ahead and put that up real quick, uh, Hayward, if we can. And it's hard to see this, but it's called the emotional pain reservoir. And, come on, uh, We're going to go through this. This is going to make sense. We're going to leave it up. But if you, if you look, stuff comes into our life, emotional pain. And then there's a dam here. A dam would be something put in the water to keep the water from passing by. Well, it can't escape. And it gets stuck inside of us and we, we feel like there's no way out. 
but there is an outlet of prayer, and so I want you to keep that up there, uh, and I just want you to think about that as we preach on it tonight, and I want to help you tonight. Uh, everybody is going through something, and everybody experiences this, and everybody possibly could have this right now, uh, emotional things in their life, ties they have uh, in the past when they were kids. I mean, there's a lot here, and I pray that the Lord would help me to say exactly what needs to be said uh, and to help us tonight. And uh, I really do want to be able to help folks. Uh, you know, sometimes read your Bible and pray to say no work. Uh, but God can have work. And we, it's all through the Bible. Everything's in here. And we just have to unlock it. And I'm going to work real hard in my life to unlock all the truths in the Bible to help all of us. Uh, and that's my job as a preacher. Uh, and, and, and I think we can do it together. So let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. Thank you for the day. Thank you for uh, what you're going to do here, God. We need your help in the message. We need your hand upon it, Father. We need you just to instruct us and lead us, Lord. May everything that is said be right from you, Lord. May I do exactly what you want to be done. And may we get some help tonight and leave here knowing we got some help from the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's be seated. We'll have another song just for a second.
restrictions come. <coughs> and, but I think, you know, thinking about the message tonight, people need the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, while we can uh, say, well, you know, you ought to give it to the Lord. That's it. That, that there's a lot, there's more to life than just saying, give it to the Lord. Yeah. And if we go in our Bibles, we find places where people went through the exact same thing we went through. But what happens with our Old English Bible and the literature that we read here, the, the way it is worded, we don't really understand a lot of what we read. You read through the Psalms, and I would dare to say that a lot of you really don't even know what you're reading. And I'm not faulting you for that. But I am going to tell you, man, God has really opened my eyes to these Psalms this last few months because I just keep going and studying out what was going on right here. Why does He write this? Why does he say this? And he's really opened up my eyes and God uh, wants us to understand what we're reading. And, you know, I have, I have Bible programs on my computer and, and I would uh, I'd tell you to get them on yours. Or I have books and uh, our phones have so much information on them now. And we've got so much stuff on our phones, but do we have a good Bible program on our phones that would give us what we need? And you can have those. And Brother Paul and I and, and J.R. know these Bible programs that can help you to understand some things. So I'll tell you, study to show thyself approved right. and let God help you with it. I want to talk to you tonight about the emotional pain reservoir. Uh, and I want you to know that we all go through things in life. Everybody's going to go through something. And we go through them and different circumstances play upon our lives and the circumstances that happen in our life, I've said this before a lot today, we are not what happened to us. We're not human doings. We're human beings. We are what God made us. We are not what we do. And can I say it like that? Now, I know some of you remember when Brother Jenkins came and preached on Naomi. And he, Naomi went back to her house after being down in Moab and says, I went out full, I've come back empty, call me uh, Mora or Mariah or whatever because I am bitter. And she was living like what she, their circumstances, but God says, you're not better, you're my child. You're, you're not who you think you are. And if we're not careful, things that happen in our life, uh, that come into our life, will, will sit inside of us. And if we don't get rid of them, we'll spoil. We'll, 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 we'll sink way down. And that's the devil's trick to do that. And so God gave us a book that will help us not to do that. Not to become what we have experienced. Not to become the things that happen in our life. To make sure we understand who we are with God. And God wants to do that. And, and in Psalm 55, David is writing. And it is at the time when his son Absalom has gone crazy. Absalom has decided he's one in the kingdom. And, and he's, David's on the run now. And David is in trouble. But let me say this now. I don't have time to get all into it. Absalom is a direct result of what David, the decisions that he made in his life that caused Absalom to do some of the things that he's doing in his life. So David's mistakes and failures are now coming to haunt him. Can you understand what I'm saying there? She, David has done some things and Absalom has become, you know, David's kids all went crazy because he blew it in a lot of different ways. He was a good man. He was a, a man after God's own heart, I mean, the Bible says, but he made some bad decisions. And it's been, Absalom's rebellion is going on and David is writing to God. And it says that it's a uh, masculine song, uh, which means it was written for instruction. Or it was written for instruction, but it's also a song or a, 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 a sermon to people to understand. So that's why David wrote it. And it has a subtitle. It's uh, to the chief musician upon Jonah L.M. Rakakim. Rakakim. And that right there, listen to what it means. Now, you'll have to stay with me. And you have to concentrate because we're going to get to where we're going. It's going to take just a minute. It means this. And I'll explain this. Concerning the doves that are congregating afar off. The, the, what is he saying? He's saying uh, the doves, God is uh, 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 out here and wanting to help him. But there's also some, some ravens that are attacking David. And David's having a hard time. 
And, and, and David probably named this psalm after he finished writing it. At the end we see he gets victory. But in the beginning he's kind of worried. He's, he's waiting for God to help him and to talk to him. And so he's writing this concerning the doves that are far off or the help that God is going to bring from afar off. But at the same time, these bad ravens are attacking David. Everybody's against David. His son's against David. Uh, the people are against David. And he's having a really tough time. Because of the choices and decisions he made early on, now he's reaping some of the things that happened in his life and it's coming back to haunt him. He looks for God to come and help him. And so, if you've ever been tempted to give up, I've been tempted to give up many times as the pastor of Liberty Baptist Church. Uh, and so, you are not alone. I've been tempted to run away from my problems. I've been tempted to uh, seek other outlets for my help. And, and, and you don't know those things about me, but I, from what I tell you. And I've, all, I've had times when I've got discouraged and wanted to give up and, and wanted to quit, and wanted to uh, do other things in my life. But man, God has always come through for me at those times. Those feelings are not true. Those are just feelings. They're, not, they're based on how I feel, not on what God says. And so uh, uh, most of us uh, have been where David is right now. David's hard-pressed by the circumstances, and they're partly his own fault. Choices and decisions he made, but they're now out of control. And the only thing to do is just to fling yourself in front of God and beg God to help you. And so I want to do that with you. And I want you to see, I want you to see about the emotional pain reservoir. Look at verses one through three. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I'm more than my complaint, and I make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. Now listen to me. David's not only talking about the enemy of his son, but he's talking about the enemy of the accuser, the devil. The devil is casting thoughts into David's mind. He's, he's scared. He's running. He's ready to give up. He doesn't want to He doesn't want to do it no more. And it's scary for David because David doesn't feel like God is hearing his prayer anymore. Look what it says now. Give ear to my prayer. Well, the reason he said that is because he thinks that God's not listening to him anymore. And, and, and let me tell you why. Because he's living in the past. He's thinking about what he did to Uriah when he killed him uh, for Bathsheba. He's thinking about the things and mistakes he made with his kids. And he, he's, he thinks that he cannot get a hold of heaven. Now listen to me, it's scary when it seems like heaven can't hear us. And we've all been there. Well, we think, man, it doesn't even make any sense to pray. God cannot put up with me. I've done too much. And, and that's where David is. He's worried that God is not hearing him. He thinks that heaven is shut up. And he thinks that God has abandoned him. And that's where he's at. David was, was concerned about his past circumstances and what had happened. And he, he's not getting any emotional relief now. And so number one, I want you to see this in verses four and five. My heart is sore pained within me. Have you ever been there? I mean, your heart physically. Listen to me. I've been in some emotional distress that physically hurt my body. Not emotionally. Where my body hurt where it just brings me down and really hurts. And that's where David is. It's getting after him. My heart is sore pain within me. And the terrors of death are falling upon me. He, he thinks there's no escape. I know that Absalom is part of that, but David thinks there's no escape. <coughs> and fearfulness and trembling are come upon me. And horror hath overwhelmed me. Now, take your Bibles and turn back to Psalm 25 real quick. We're going to get to it. Don't worry. Psalm 25, verse number 16. Sit on the front of your seat. Pinch yourself. Do whatever you can do, but do not go to sleep on God's Word when He wants to help you tonight. Psalm 25, verse number 16. David says, Turn thee unto me. 
and have mercy upon me. For I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring thee, bring me out, bring thou me out of my distress. Look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. David is having a hard time. He's made some bad decisions. He's in, he's in the wilderness right now. He feels all alone. He, he was the king of Israel. God put him there, by the way. Now listen to me. God made David the king of Israel. David made bad choices, but God still had his hand on David at the same time. He forgave him. Now, let me say this. Because you've been forgiven of your sin, does not mean that you're not going to have to suffer some of the consequences of your sin. That's right. You understand that? I, I, I say it often. I still have a lot of bad dreams. And I still have a lot of things going through my head. A lot of visions. I still see some of the most ungodly things in my head. It's because of the sin that I was involved in. And so David is still going to have to suffer from some of the things that he did. But he's completely forgiven. And God made him the king. You understand that? He's running from Absalom, but he's running. And God said he would be the king. God said that the Messiah would come through David. That God put him there. God said, you're a king, David. And David says, I'm scared of running. No, David, you're a king. No, I'm scared and I'm going to run. No, David, you're a king. I'm scared and run. You see, he's basing himself off of his feelings. He's not basing himself off of what God said he is. And so we keep keep thinking, keep reading here. David is still haunted by his past. And he's going to have to live where he that's the problem with emotional pain. You know, stuff's going to hurt. In verse number four or five, he is pained. Terrors of death are falling. He's thinking he's going to die. Have you ever been so. So, so emotionally distressed that you thought, man, I can't take it. I cannot take it. I've been there many times. And fearfulness and trembling have come upon me. And horror have overwhelmed me. Overwhelmed means that he is just totally flabbergasted with life. And he's, he's in trouble. And, and, he, and, he's, and, and it's not going to get any better. His whole world is crumbling around. So we see, number one, the problem with emotional pain, but then the source of it. Look at verse 12. Now, we're going to get right into the message. Verse 12, for it was not the enemy that reproached me. It wasn't one of his enemies that were doing it to him. And, and right here, he's not even talking about Absalom. He's talking about another one of his friends. Then I could have borne it if it was the enemy. If, if someone that hated me treated me real wrong, then it would be easy to take. Neither was it he that hated me that... that that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man of my equal, my guide, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked in the house of God in company. See, the source of it, uh, and, and we have it up there for you to see, emotional pain comes from friends. Emotional pain comes from people that loved, it, that, that loved you once. And and then and then and they they they, 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 they say they, they still love you sometimes and, and, and emotional pain comes from, from abuse, from verbal abuse, from mental abuse, from from a, a, a physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse. You that happens to you. you you've been abused and that, that's what happened. David was being abused by one of his friends and by one of his sons, but maybe today, man, maybe you've been through some stuff that's in your life and it's been hard to get over. Um, source of emotional pain is betrayal, lack of adult protection. My mama didn't take care of me like she was supposed to. My dad didn't take care of me like they were supposed to. I was betrayed. Uh, your, your, your husband, your, your, your spouse has left you. Uh, your parents were divorced. I mean, there's betrayal is real. And it gets inside of a person and it becomes emotional pain. And, and it will hurt you. And it will, it will take you or you, get you to think of the wrong stuff. But you, you can't take it. I want to end it. I'm not, not doing very well. I need some help. 
conflict, parental conflicts, uh, you know, uh, marital problems, work problems, friendship problems, personal drama. I mean, that creates stuff inside of you, and this stuff is going to come. Now listen to me. It's going to come because we're human and we have to live in the world, but it has to escape. And when the dam goes up and it gets stuck in there, that's when people start thinking it's over. I can't take it. And it starts welting up in them and starts and it starts hurting them and it becomes a reservoir. It becomes a wall. It becomes a place where they can't escape. And it's not supposed to stay there. Does everybody follow me so far? It is not supposed to stay there. It, 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 you, David didn't want it. David is upset about it. And David, there was a friend and there was someone that she trusted in. And look, life did not go David's way. And that is a fact in life, that it is not going to always go your way. And it's just what happens. The devil wants to trap you with it and keep it inside of you, but you got to get it out. Look at verse 6. The desire of the emotional pain, of those in emotional pain. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. Then I would fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness, Selah. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Hey, the desire, man, of escape is, is anger. <coughs> man, I wish I could just get away. wish I could just escape everything. Get away from everybody and run off and, and quit. Uh, uh, promiscu <laughs> promiscuity, man. Uh, uh, you know, I just need to go ahead and, and leave her and go do this. Or leave him and go do this with someone else. Hurting yourself, uh, drugs, alcohol, pornography, thoughts of suicide. I mean, this is real stuff that happens to people. And, and it is something we're going to deal with in our lifetimes. And, and you're going to deal with, with, with people that you know. And God wants us to understand this. And so when it happens, it, you know, man, what do we do? We want to leave. We want to fly away. We want to quit. We want to wander afar off. We don't want to be around nobody. We want to hasten our escape from the windy storm and tempest. I just want to get away. I don't want to talk to nobody. I want to get away. That's what happens. That's, that's, that's natural. That's exactly what happens when we get hurt. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think about my life. I, 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 I'm going to West Virginia. Those kids, that name... They, they, there's a lot going on in West Virginia. It's sad. And, and I'm going to have to deal with some of these kids and, that have been uh, hurt by their relatives and sexually and mentally and verbally. And, and, man, and they're just boiling up inside. They're just kids. And they can't handle it all. And that's what happens to us. Anybody in the room, you've been through something traumatic, something's happened, and I've been with a whole church full of those who've been through some stuff. I mean, if we keep it in here and it, it's, it, just, it just boils and boils and boils and, and man, it will take you down a rough, rough road. And that's the devil's plan. He just wants that to happen. But God says, look, people are going to go through stuff. Uh, we've all been through some things and we have to recover. So the desire is to run. David was thinking about death. <laughs> I mean, the terrors of death are falling upon me. Well, I don't understand very much. Well, God said, David, you're going to be the king of Israel. And nothing changed with God. Everything changed with David's circumstances. Absalom went a little bit crazy. Things were happening. But God's hand was on David to be the king. And God was going to take care of David. And David did all this extra stuff worrying because he thought he was his circumstances and did not think about him being the king that God made the king. Does everybody follow what I'm saying? He is not what he thinks he is. And man, the devil does a real good job of making us think we're something we're not. Yeah, I, I said it again this morning about speaking in the first person. I ought to just, I just ought to kill myself. I ought to just quit. I ought to just stop going. I ought to just not pay attention. That's not what you think. You're spiritual. You, you're a spiritual being. God's inside there, and you're listening to the devil in the third per first person, and you're thinking that he, you're talking and he's talking. Yeah. Man, I'm a child of God. Amen. God put me here. 
God led me here. God's working in my life, and I cannot believe what the devil... Lord, help me to refuse to believe my feelings to that. Help me to put up walls. Help me to, to, to trust in your word, in your holy written word. What you think, what you say I am, what you believe in. God, you knew I was going to let you down, but you love me anyway. And, and I made some mistakes, but the Lord said he forgave those mistakes. And, and I don't have to live in the past. And David was living in the past when God already forgave him. He was worried, man, you know, this, this is all, you know, my life is messed up because of decisions. And they were messed up because of his decisions, but there was a way to escape. So don't potential damn stop the emotional pain from escaping, and then next thing you know, you're angry, you're bitter at the wrong people, you're angry at the people that hurt you. you I mean, there's kids cutting themselves all over this country, cutting themselves. Just slicing themselves up. And maybe you're hurting yourself. And, and, and I'm just telling you, that's the desire of a person that's got emotional uh, uh, pain in them. But look what the solution is for. Look at verse 16. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. See, that's what the Word of God told David. That's what God, David wrote the Word of God often. Kings would rewrite the Bible, the, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible they were required to. But he was writing psalms and, 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 and hymns and different things. And David always knew, God, God's going to take care of me. As for me, I will call upon the Lord and He shall save me. Evening and morning and noon will I pray. What do we do, Brother Bert, when we're going Evening and morning and noon. Pray. God will help you. So I don't know how to pray. God's not interested in a very form, uh, formal prayer. God just wants you to get down and say, Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me. And, and you don't even understand. See, we don't call out to God enough to understand that He can help us. And if we miss that part, the devil has it right. Man, they're in emotional distress. They're angry, they're bitter, they've been betrayed, they've been abused, there's been conflicts in their life, and now they're wanting to kill themselves, and they're trying to get he's trying to get rid of us. And God says, No, I made you, and I saved you, and you can call upon me, and I will save you. David knew. See, he starts reverting back and saying, Wait a minute now, God did make me a king. God did anoint me with oil. God did come get me out of the out of the fold with the sheep. God could have chose anybody, but He chose me. God helped me to escape out of Saul, out of the way of Saul. Often, I mean, David would be sitting there. Saul would throw a javelin at him. David would escape. Uh, God's done a lot for me. And so maybe you need to start thinking about that stuff. And, and God wants to help you. And, and listen, I don't have a, a quick remedy. The only remedy is this. Just stay down. Lord, save me. God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Please help me. And cry and weep and mourn and fling yourself to the Lord and beg Him to supernaturally get you. Because God is supernatural. I, I, I get so sick of being around Christians that hoot and holler over going to heaven. That is an impossibility compared to Him helping you right here on your knees. Yeah. Yeah. And that's unbelievable that we're going to go to heaven. But to get Him to come and console you, years ago, I've told the story before, I sat in that office when it was right there, and something came over me, a bad, bad spirit got on me. And I was said, Kara, I am quitting. I'm not supposed to be here. I don't want to be here. I am done with this. And we weren't having any problems. Me and him weren't having any problems. It's just something dark got on me. And, and I just bowed my knees and I said, God, you've got to stop this. Amen. And God started hitting me with Philippians 4. What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good report? Think on these things. What sort of things are just? And man, I just started saying, right, Lord, i got to think on these good things. i got to think on something right. And I, I started begging God to help me. And supernaturally, in that office, about three, three hours later, God picked me up, 
gave me the message to come in and preach what happened to me. Preached on a Thursday night, and I got the victory from the Lord. Amen. I've had problems in our marriage where we've just said we've got to get to the Lord. Only God's going to help us. You see, God wants to be the outlet. You get a dam and it can't escape, but the outlet is right here. David says, I'm going to call on God. I'm just going to ask God to help me. God gave him the throne by a covenant. It was inconceivable to, the, conceivable to David uh, that he was going to be snatched away from the throne. And, and we, listen, he came to God confidently by in God's word. God, you've got to help us. George Miller, a good missionary of old, that started an orphanage. He would tell God, he would remind God that the orphans are yours, God. We don't have any food. And these are real deal missionary stories. The orphans, there's no food, Lord. You said you'd take care of them. And God would show up confidently. He would remind God. And David does that right there. As for me, I will call upon God. And the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and noon will I pray. Cry aloud. Cry. Cry aloud. Lord, do, Lord, please. Stop crying about it and cry to God with it. Amen. And just beg Him to do something. Beg Him to give you some peace. Beg Him to help you. I mean, I'll never forget watching them hide all those drugs on this deal when we first moved here. Seven years later, I'm a little more confident than I was back then. When we first moved here, that was a nightmare. Yep. That was scary. I really thought I moved here and it was a mistake. They are going to kill us and they're not going to leave. And I just went up and got a hold of God and laid on the bed and said, Lord, please. I didn't tell Kara half the time. I told her I wasn't worried about it. It's okay, honey. It's fine. God take care of us. But I didn't even believe that. What did you do? I just had to get down and start begging God to touch us. Amen. And to help us. And, 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 and God has given me great peace. And God's God's responsibility to take care of me and to take care of this church and to take care of my family. And, and God is the one that has to feed the fatherless, fatherless, and God is the one that has to to feed the, uh, to take care of you. And God is the one that has to restore us when we have this emotional pain. But but God, we get locked right in here, and we hit the dam, and we forget that God is there, and we, maybe we've never gotten Him. To be able to help us. God to give you the strength. It's a supernatural moving of God. Amen. It is not, uh, 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 you know, going to be, uh, you, you know, uh, you know and God, help me. I pray that you'd help me. Oh, I feel so much better. That's what we look for in this life, this time in our, in our lives, this day and age. People want to be delivered right away. Well, why don't you just get down and beg them? And, and he said, well, we ain't got time to do that here tonight. You may not have time to do it here tonight. Why don't you go home and beg, Lord, please give me something. A lot of you in this room have read the Bible enough that God can give you something. He can give it to you. And He can strengthen you. Verse 22, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Amen. That's a promise from God. There's always an outlet. There's always an escape of the temptation in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 10.23. Is it 1 Corinthians 10.23? 10.13? It, 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 it's always an escape. God doesn't put nothing on you. Listen to me. Don't be a sucker. Don't be a quitter. Don't be someone that gives up and throws in the towel. You're stronger than you think you are. And if you don't get past that emotional pain and then and, and woe is me and I'm so, you know, folks, we have to live in the bed we made. We have to sleep in the bed we made. I mean, it is what it is. There's no way to go back and do it over again. But you can live right where you're at with God and it'd be a good life. No matter what you've done. Moses killed the Egyptians. David killed Uriah. And God got on David and helped him. And, 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 and all of them made mistakes. And Paul made big mistakes. And God got on him. What did he do? He prayed a lot. 
And, and nobody's went through what he's went through. So I'm just telling you tonight, man, leave it to the eternal one who loves you. Psalm 56, 9. Just because it's across the page, and I like it. When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. God is for me. But Paul preached a message years ago. God is for me. God is for me. In God will I praise His word. In the Lord will I praise His word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Hey, listen to me, guys. The solution for the emotional pain would be the Lord. And there's no really no, no way to make me to help you to understand that more than saying get down and beg him to come. Because I guarantee you this, he will come. Yeah, he's never not come. Problem is, he's not, probably not coming in 10 seconds. And prayer is real deal yeah. work. It is fatiguing. <laughs> it will spend you. You will be tired from it if you have to wait on Him to come sometimes. And we're more willing to, you know, we're going to cry and worry and, and go through all that stress and be just as uh, uh, tired from it. Why don't we just fall at the Savior's feet and realize that, man, we're not what our past is. I'm not what, what, what I've, what, what I've uh, done. I'm what God made me. God did it for me. And the anger and the resentment and the, 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 the physical and the emotional things that you go through and the, the, the problem of trying to escape them, you're not going to escape them but with the Lord. And if you're not careful, it gets all stuck in there and you got nothing. And then you, you, you continue to be bitter. There are people all over that never got past this stuff. That never got better. They just got bitter. And, and, and listen, David gives us a prime example about don't let the emotional pain reservoir fill up. And if it is filled up, you've got to get the outlet of prayer and just say, cast thy burden upon the Lord. Cast thy burden upon Jesus. He cares for you. I mean, He does. Uh, and, and the Lord will never fail. Draw, it's always the same. Draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. Whatever it is in your life, whatever's going on in your life, man, get to the Lord tonight. Whatever it is, go home and fall on your face and pray until God helps you. I'd say God didn't mean to sit down and wait for Him that long. Yes, you do. Cry out to God. Tell Him exactly how you feel. You understand that? No. Just say exactly what you want to say to Him. Lord, I just feel so hurt. Lord, help me. Lord, I feel so betrayed. Lord, help me. Lord, I know I made mistakes, but God forgave me those mistakes. Don't, don't mess us messing up and think that you have to live in guilt of those sins. If you're saved, God forgave you. Past, present, and future. But God expects you to mess up. He expects you to mess up just like you did. Matter of fact, He knew what you would do. But it's correction. It's called being a leader and, and, and getting to the Lord and asking God to help you. Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you. And God, I thank you for... Uh, Lord, I pray, Father, you use it tonight. Lord, I, felt, I, I just want you to be lifted up, Lord. I want folks to understand that uh, David was going through it. And many times, many times in this Bible, Lord, David suffered through all alone. But every time he comes back to you, now you can help him. Lord God, you allowed that to be put in the pages of this book for us and to be able to draw from it, to be able to draw closer to you because of it. And Lord, I'm just thankful that, that there is a way out when, it, when times seem tough, when we are overwhelmed, when our heart is, is overwhelmed, when it sore pains within us, when we just want to get away, we want to fly away, we want to leave, that there are the Holy Spirit of God, the doves that will come if we'll just call. Lord, while the world and our enemy, the devil, is on the outside trying to attack us, Lord, you've got a plan for us. Please help us, Lord, to get victories in our life tonight and every time, Lord, to, to realize that we are not what we have done. We are what you said we are. 
Lord, I just want you to know that we need you tonight, Father. Bless the invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. You